In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we heard the account of a man and his two sons, as told to us by Christ in the form of a parable. The youngest son approaches his father and requests that he receives his inheritance before the proper time. And after his father agrees to this, the son quickly departs and travels to a far off land. We are told upon his travels and upon his arrival to the foreign place, the son practices prodigal living, throwing away all of his belongings and the entirety of the inheritance he had just received from his father. He wastes everything in a short amount of time. And when a terrible famine befalls that nation, he was left with nothing and was desperately poor. Although he was able to obtain employment feeding pigs, his circumstances remained the same. In this desperate poverty, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, but no one gave him anything. According to the narrative, he came to terms with himself and in the midst of his difficult situation, he came to the realization that while he was starving to death in the foreign land, the servants of his father's house had plenty to eat and food to spare. Finally, coming to his senses, he declares, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Rising, he returned to his father. However, this, his father saw him from a far distance as he drew closer and closer. With compassion for his child, the father ran to greet him, embraced him, and kissed him with the deepest affection and sense of thanks for the return of his lost son. The father immediately commanded his servants to bring the finest robe, a ring for his finger, and to have the fatted calf slaughtered. Even though the son acknowledged in his heart his immorality and his unworthiness to be called a son, in addition, he demanded that the fatted calf, which was only reserved for feasts, only for special occasions, that one calf be used for this celebration. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. At each level of this parable of the prodigal son serves as a precise symbol of repentance. Sin is hunger, captivity to strangers and exile. To repent is to return from exile to our actual home in the Father's house where we will regain our freedom and inheritance. However, contrition necessitates action. I will rise up and go, the son says. Repentance is more than just feeling guilty. It's about making a choice and carrying it through. Through this parable, Christ teaches us three other important lessons. The state of the sinner, the importance of repentance, and the extent of God's great compassion. This story is told after the Sunday of the publican and the Pharisee in hopes that we could recognize our own sinfulness in the prodigal son and learn to recognize God again by turning from our sins and embracing him. The story gives us hope and gives hope to individuals who have lost all hope because of their wrongdoings and believe that there is no forgiveness. The loving and patient Father in heaven is eagerly awaiting our return. Nothing can make his love for us stronger. Ultimately, this tale provides us with an understanding of the world that we live in. It is a world in which people's actions are disjointed and disorganized with regard to achieving God's intended person for the human being. 
It is a world of meaningless goals, false aspirations, unsatisfied desires, a world where deception and sin are pervasive. In a world where nothing is making sense, it is fundamentally opposed to the world that God created in the first place. Until we turn back to God, there is no remedy for the injustices of our day. The world we live in is a barren land, one that differs radically from the world that God first created. It is with this expression of melancholy and exile that the Orthodox Church understands the lament of Psalm 137. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept. As we remembered Zion, on the willows we hung our harps. For how could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? In this story, we meet a son who leaves his father's home and wastes his inheritance on careless endeavors. But in his hour of hopelessness and poverty, he goes with humility to his father, asking for pardon and reconciliation. Simply put, the parable of the prodigal son serves as a powerful image of God's unending mercy and unwavering love to each one of us. It serves as a reminder that our Heavenly Father is waiting for us to return to Him, ready to forgive and restore us, regardless of how far we may wander or how deeply we may fall. The difficulties of living in this world and the separation from God are the results of a life dominated by self-indulgences and sin. Sin separates us from our true home, and defiles and destroys our spiritual beauty. We acknowledge this, is, this in genuine repentance, and we convey a strong wish to go back and reclaim our home and reclaim what was lost in us. The church invites us to find the strength and the desire to come back on this day, as she reminds us of everything that we have lost or have abandoned. God is prepared to welcome us and offer us his mercy and consoling embrace. This week, leading up to the first days of Lent, we are all called to reflect on what separates us from God, personally and collectively. Have there been any instances where we have strayed from God's plan? Have we wasted the blessings and the gifts that he has given us? Do we bear heavy loads on our souls from feelings of shame or guilt? We are compelled, like the prodigal son that we heard about this morning, to humbly confess our transgressions and pursue pardon from God. We have a chance during Great Lent to turn away from sin and into our Father's arms once more. If we allow for his transforming grace to enter our hearts through acts of prayer, fasting and almsgiving, enabling him to cleanse and renew us from the inside out, making us worthy to approach Christ on the day of his resurrection and ours. Amen.